Enough theory. Let's have a look at a functional bot and then look at how it was made. I have here a bot that showcases text generation and image generation using OpenAI's APIs. So you can see here, I've already started the conversation. Let's pick text generation first. That's simpler. So we're asked three questions to build some kind of poem. So who is the antagonist? Let's say over politeness. And we get our result right here. A wonderful poem. Once we get the result, we're brought back to a main menu and re ask the same question. This time, let's pick image generation. So the first question we're asked is how many people are there? The first choice we're going to pick is one person. They will be playing ping pong. One person playing ping pong is a great thing. And we're going to go for retro. And we get our result. This is a carousel element, so we can see both like this. All right, that's it. That's our bot. Okay, so now we're going to go to the main node and we're going to have a look at how it's built. The first thing that you see on the top left right here, the entry node, that's where everything starts. Specifically in the main node, if you were to open another flow, uh, they would also have an entry node like this. Every single flow has an entry node, but the, the one in the main flow is very special because it starts everything off. Likewise, there's an end node here at the very end. So when someone is redirected towards the end of a conversation, regardless of where they are, the next action that will happen either trigger a Q&A, like what is GPT? This would be a Q&A, or it will start off the entry path. So it, it will look at the transition. The transition is just a condition that when met, we send the user off to wherever the transition is pointing to. So in this case, the entry node has one transition, which is always, and it sends the user to the greet if needed node right here. Next up is the greet if needed node. Uh, this is just uh, two conditions that you can see here. So user was already greeted. So the first transition is user was greeted. If you were to click on it like this, you could see that this is actually just a caption that I'm showing just to keep things clean. But the, the real condition is right here. Workflow.greeted is equal to true. Uh, this is code, but it's very simple. I'm going to show it to you in a second. And if this doesn't happen, uh, we send the user otherwise here to the greet user node right there. Let's go back to this. You see this workflow.greeted. So workflow just means your variables. Uh, the way you create a variable is you click anywhere. You see the, the little dots and uh, you click plus variable like this. Then you, you pick the type that you want. So a string is just text. A Boolean is a yes or no. A number is number. Date is a date. An object is uh, for programmers if they want to do something. Array is a list of things. This is a list of fixed things. So it, it will always be one of them. And pattern is fancy, regular expression, developer magic. In the case of greeted, it's a yes or no. Has the user been greeted? You can see I already have the, the value right here, but we could just duplicate it. This is greeted. And the description could be the user. All right. And then here in my condition, I could just change it to is greeted. And that would be the same thing, except for right here in my greet user node, I do have to inform botpress that this variable was changed from false to true. From false to true means from no to yes. So I'm going to click here, go to execute code. Execute code is how you change your variables. Uh, it sounds very scary. It's code, but it's really only one line. So workflow is always the same. Dot means it's a part of, and then you have your variable name here. So we could change it to is greeted like this, and it's going to be set to true. So to summarize, we created our is greeted variable right here. We have a node here that checks if it's set to true or to yes. If it is, we send the user to this node where something happens. I will get to that later. And if it's not set to yes, it will be sent to this node, which will say hello, explain what it can do, and it will execute this, which is basically setting this variable to yes. Okay, so the next step is right here, standard one. By the way, 
you can click any node, go here and change the title to something that makes sense. I'm going to change this to be uh, pick use case, right? Because we're asking the user to pick between text generation and image generation. By the way, this node right here is what you see right here. We have a message, what shall it be, which is shown right here on the left, and the two choices, which are right here. So the way to create that is to drag a content right here, like this. And then when you drag the content on a node, or you can also, let's say you delete it, you could also drag a content right here, and it would create a node for you with that element already there, okay? But in this case, I've already built it. I'm just going to delete it. We're going to drag the content from the left here. And then right here, you see all the content types. So in this example, we've shown text right here. We've shown choices. Choices is basically like this. And the other thing we've shown is carousel. The carousel is right here with the images. And then we have this right here, which is the listen. So the listen allows you to basically say, hey, stop, let's wait for the user to either click a button or write something, say something. So I'm going to show you the transitions here. User picked text generation. The way it works is when you have a choice like this, the response will be stored to this notation right here. So event payload and then triple equals means just is set to. And then you put whatever whatever value you have like this between your quotes like this. Okay, so that's how you do your transitions with your choices like this. Now that we know what the user has clicked, we'll want to send them to the right location. Now we could have everything in this main flow and it would work, but it would be unwieldy real quick. So instead of that, what we do is we create subflows. So this is to create a topic right next to topic. And if you want to create a, a flow within a topic. So within global right here, you can click create a new flow right here, and you could call this text gen or whatever you want. And then you can organize your code for that flow right here. Back to main. The way you can redirect a user to a different flow is by right clicking on the workflow right here, anywhere actually, and clicking or actually hovering execute a workflow and then selecting the one you want. So in our case, let's say text gen, we have this text generation flow right here. So I could just delete that. I just clicked backspace. So I drag this right here and I transition by selecting the dot next to the transition and bringing it up to the node that I wanna to connect to like this. And here, I'm just gonna give a caption to this transition exit and I'm gonna send this back to the pick choice. When this workflow is done, I want to ask the user if they wanna keep going. Okay, notice how there's an exit right here, but actually you could have multiple exits. You could redirect the user somewhere else. But for the moment, let's keep it simple. One node, one exit right here. Okay, now let's go to the text generation flow by clicking text generation on the left hand. And I'm going to zoom into the entry node. You can see antagonist and results. So these are the two variables that I set. Remember, I left click the workflow and then under flow properties in the contextual panel, you can set or add new variables. So after the entry node, there's a, another node that just explains what's going to happen. And after that, we have something new, a prompt. So let me zoom out a little bit. You can think of a prompt as a gate that requires information. So any user that's sent into a prompt will have to answer some questions and you can be guaranteed that when the user leaves the prompt, either there will be a failure for whatever reason right here that let's say the user refuses to answer or the answer will be extracted successfully. Earlier, when I was showing you about this question right here with two buttons, that was the hammer approach. If you want the convenient option, you'll want to use the prompt. Now let's click this prompt right here and you have a number of options right here. Most of the time you'll be able to use the defaults. So I'm just going to skip over to the field right here. You can have as many fields as you want. Every field acts like a mini prompt. 
So whenever you reach a next field, you can guarantee that the previous field has been filled. I'm going to click it and we're going to have a look at the right panel right here. So we can see when we click single choice here under extraction, that these are all the types of prompts that we have. Uh, so full address, email, color, price, quantity, weight, volume. We have tons of things here. And in this case, we have a single choice. So a single choice is similar to what we see here with text generation, image generation. Once you select that, you have to select the variable. This is the name of the variable we use to store the information in. In this case, we call it the antagonist. So we're asking the user this question. And then below it, send list of choices with a question. If you activate that, you can actually give the choices. The next thing is validation. If it fails, you can send a custom message. Okay, so that's it for prompts. Uh, in this case, we saved it to antagonist. When it succeeds, then we can use it. So how do we use it? If you see here, we have two pieces of contents. The first is just generic. It's just text, nothing special. Here we are actually displaying workflow.result, but we haven't talked about result yet. So how did we get this? So I'm going to click execute code here and there's a lot of stuff. Don't worry. This is doing is it's just calling the open API code. If you're an engineer looking at this, the interesting thing is you have access to Axios. You can call any API from here and get the result and then store it to a variable. So for all the non-developers, this is the same exact notation, workflow dot the variable name you want to use and equal to whatever value you want. Okay, so we set it right here and then we display it right here. And that's it. After this, we always send the user to this node and this node says bringing you back to the main menu and we send the user to exit. Exit right here brings the user back to main to this right here, which sends the user back to pick choice. And the flow keeps going over and over again, right? That's it. Remember, if you have any questions, you can join us uh, on intercom and ask us questions. Or if you have any feedback to leave, this is a preview. We are constantly improving the product and your feedback is golden. Happy bot building.